Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my art channel and thank you for stopping by. So today I'm making a very fun little piece. This is just an 8x10 canvas, but it's going to be a string pull, chain pull combination to make flowers. I'd like to create kind of this vintage looking bouquet of flowers. And then I want to add butterfly wings to it. So I've got my wings over here. I've got wings and antennae of three different types of butterflies. So the goal is to have sort of, if these are the flowers coming up, I want to have one butterfly flying and then two kind of perched on the sides of the flowers as though they're sitting on the flowers drinking the nectar. So I'm very excited about this, and let's go ahead and get started. My colors, I've got this big thing of white that's all mixed up. That'll be my base, white. That's Sargent and Apple Barrel mixed. Then I have, this is um, Creative Inspirations Crimson mixed with Blick Studio Acrylics Dioxazine Purple, Violet, Purple one of them, dioxazine, whatever it is, to make this beautiful kind of purpley maroon color. Then I have metallic magenta from Blick Studio Acrylics. Then I have this creamy pink, which I don't even remember what this is. It's more or less based off of light portrait pink from Liquitex Basics. And it probably has some of that. It may be a mix of other colors and brands to sort of create that same pink effect. And then I have Deep Yellow from Creative Inspirations. So you can see all of this paint, it's mixed kind of medium to medium thin. It's not really, really thin, but it's, it's relatively thin. It's, this is like what I would use for a swipe. Then this is, I think, Primary Yellow from Blacrylic mixed with some of the deep yellow just to warm it up a bit. Then I have Brilliant Yellow Green from Blick Studio Acrylics. This shows well the, uh, the consistency I've been trying to get. So it flows well medium to medium thin. Then I have Spring Green by Apple Barrel and middle green from Creative Inspirations. So I've got three different greens for my leaf colors and five different colors for flowers. And I tried to pick colors in the sort of vintage color scheme, warm tones, maroons and pinks and stuff. So I want it to look very kind of Victorian in its feel. All right, let's make a painting. I'm going to start by adding my white base coat to my canvas. And you want quite a thin coat of it. So that doesn't mean that the paint has to be a really thin consistency, it just means you don't want a thick layer of paint. If you have too much paint, it will warp your chain pulls and string pulls more than you might want. Now, maybe you want that, and if so, great, but I don't want too much paint on here. Just gonna give it a tilt. <laughs> My paint's kind of too thick to tilt. Well, it actually means that I have a nice, nice thin layer on there. The paint is thickish. You know, it's not really, really thin, but it's, uh, it's a thin layer of paint. So. Just 
just making sure it's evenly spread. Okay, so for the chain pulls, I think I want to start, since the tall ones always look kind of like calla lilies, I want to start with this dark purplish maroon and some of the metallic magenta mixed in. So I have these little ball chains, they're just the jewelry size ones. I'm going to put it in there. You lay it out kind of in an S shape. And I'm not going to go all the way down because that'll be covered. And then you just slowly pull it straight back. And all the way down. Oh yeah, that looks great. All right, I'm sort of wiping off the chain and then I'll use the same one because it's the same color to make a second one over on the other side. Beautiful. Now I'm just going to drop this into a cup of water to keep the paint soft until I can go wash that off. Great! Yeah, those are beautiful. Okay, uh, now I want some yellows. So I'm going to add some of this deep yellow and some of the primary yellow. Even if you want basically one color, like yellow, it's nice to have at least two different tones of that paint color, just so that it creates kind of a three-dimensional and interesting quality to that yellow, so it's not just plain, plain yellow here or there. that all covered. Then I'm going to use the same same technique there. Little S's. That's really pretty. It's so dainty there in the middle. Okay, wipe it off. I'm gonna do it again. Okay, let's do one more of those yellow ones. And then we'll add some green so that it definitely looks like plants. Perfect. That looks wonderful. All right, I'm dropping that chain into the water. 
Okay, so what I want here now is I'm gonna add some green sort of here in between the yellow. And then I'm gonna add two, two string pole flowers that are just a different shape which I like having the different shape um, there in the mix. It just makes it more interesting. So greens. I'm gonna go with the, the darker greens up top so that they really stand out. So here's my middle green and spring green, which still are not all that dark, but my uh, bright or brilliant yellow green is very light. So we'll save that for the, the smaller ones down here. That's nice. All right, let me add another one kind of over this maroon. Great. I think I'm going to add one, one more green here on the side. I don't want it to look too symmetrical, but I also want it to look balanced. So just trying to walk that line between being balanced, but not being, you know, boring because it's exactly the same on each side. Okay, this is super pretty. I love the color blend. So now I want to make some sort of peachy pink, almost hibiscus type flowers. So I'm gonna add, it's gonna be mostly this light portrait pink with just a little bit of the metallic magenta and just a little bit of white. Just to add a bit of color differentiation. Okay. And for these flowers, I'm going to use string. So you just need a very small piece of string. So just have like a six or seven inch section here and when you're using string you really have to make sure that the string is soaking up the paint and really absorbing it this is just like craft yarn that I'm using it's no no fancy string just any any old string is fine Okay, so I'm going to do one kind of up here, and then the other one set a little bit lower. So with these, you make a loop, and you kind of press it down just a little bit to make sure it contacts, and then you pull it in. And there you have it. And then you wipe off the string and try it again. I'm going to dab up a bit of this extra paint here where it absorbed or where it kind of piled up. Just going to take some of that away. Let's add the next petal. Going to add a little bit more of the metallic magenta and white just to make sure that that 
multicolored effect in the petals stays good. That petal turned out pretty. What I did with that last one, which turned out so well, was to hold the tip as I press it down, sort of use the, the toothpick to hold the tip down as I pull. That way it can't pop around and make a weird little smudge in the rest of the flower. Just dab up a little bit of this extra. The nice thing about using your finger to get up extra paint is it makes this, it's almost like a balloon kiss. It's like this little star point right in the middle, which is perfect for the center of a flower. Okay, one more petal here and then I'll do the next one. I'm loving how this is looking. That petal's like perfect. Just a little dab in the center to tie it all together. Amazing, love it. Okay, on to the next one, which is gonna use the same colors. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more paint here to my puddle. I will use a fresh string. You wouldn't have to if you're using the same colors, but I'm going to. So I just made kind of a bad swipe. My string didn't lift up cleanly. It smeared through the rest of my design, but that's fine because I think I'm gonna put my next petal directly over that. So I think it'll be okay. The nice thing with a chain pole, string pole, whatever you use here, is that you can almost always add more elements on top of what you have. As long as you work from top to bottom or from the inside to the outside, you can add elements to cover up any mistakes and it ends up looking fine. Okay, let's see if we can get one last clean petal right here and then we will finish it off with some more leaves, I don't know, some more yellow flowers, who knows. Beautiful, very delicate, very sort of abstract. I think I need another dark red flower down here before I add the final greenery. So, another chain here in the dark red or the the magenta the sort of maroon and metallic magenta oh that's pretty and I'm actually going to add another one over here otherwise the dark I think it'll feel unbalanced if it's too dark on one side and not the other. Okay, for my last elements down here on the bottom, I want to add some lighter green leaves. So this will be the spring green mixed with the bright, no, brilliant yellow green.
gorgeous. I'm also going to add a stripe down here to the bottom, a few stripes to the, the side edge because I've been neglecting to get that with my colors. So, all right, let's do another one, same green colors. All right, that looks great. And I think it's all right that I don't have any yellow further down because it's so prominent up here. I think that'll be fine. But I am gonna grab just a little bit so that I can um, sort of run this chain along the, um, you know, the side of the canvas to make it look like I've been dragging it down the whole time and it has all the colors involved. So I'm gonna grab each color and add some down there. Obviously we want mostly green at the bottom, like stems, but because you see all the colors down here at the bottom, you do want some of every color represented so it doesn't look weird. Actually, I'm also going to just sort of scoop up some color on this little palette knife and add it at the top and let it drip down so it looks very organic because it's looking too much like stripes right now. Okay, I'm satisfied with my edge there. Great! Okay, let me clean this surface because the next thing for me to add is the butterfly wings. And I wanna make sure that I don't get them all messy as I add them in. Okay, so I have three different types of butterfly wings here. I have a clear wing, which is a, it's got a pink back wing and a clear top wing and then I have a yellow one which I have all the wings for maybe the yellow will go right here in the middle and the clear wing will be hanging off of this one and the orange one will be over here I think that'll work well so I have a pair of forceps here which I use to carefully pick up the butterfly wings so first I'm just going to start by kind of arranging the wings to see how they would look, what kind of spacing I need. It can actually be quite tricky to pick up the wings. Okay. And with these two on the side, I'm doing the top wing first and then the bottom wing because the bottom wing will slightly overlap the top wing. That's how real butterflies actually look. Oh, that's beautiful. And then I'll, I'll paint in some of the body and the legs. All right, let me add the pink one over here now. This is such a gorgeous butterfly. Now a lot of times when I do butterfly wings I paint the backs white so that color doesn't bleed through them. But since the background here is white it's not something I'm concerned with today but I do want the wing to contact all the way down into the paint. I'm just gonna carefully touch it with my finger. 
trying to be super gentle not smudge the color at all but also just make sure that it's completely pressed down into the paint well that's gonna look great <sighs> okay last one this little yellow one let me get it arranged over here so I know what it's gonna look like Okay, let's do the top wings. Beautiful. Last wing. Amazing. That looks so good. Slightly, slightly off center, but when I, um, when I brush paint the body, it'll look fine. Okay, the last thing to do is to add antennae and I have real butterfly antennae to add, which you wouldn't have to, you could easily paint them, but it looks so much more realistic to have the actual antennae and, um, and you have the texture as well as, you know, the fine lines. Whoops, that one sunk in the paint a little bit. That'll be okay. So what happened with these is one of them got some white paint on it. I'll still be able to touch that up with black to make it look more realistic um, after, after the painting has dried. And you'll still be able to see the texture, so it's still fine. Not a problem. Okay. Let's do this guy, because the paint around him is drying very rapidly. And this one's antennae are so small, I can almost not pick them up. Woo! Got it in. All right, next one. Perfect. Okay, last set is for this pink butterfly, and then I'll give you the close up. Ha! Huh. Got it. Three sets of wings, three sets of antennae. Looking fantastic. I am completely done with this. Let me give you a close up. Okay, here we go. So let's start down here at the bottom. We got these beautiful little pale green leaves. This is what my end looks like. So it definitely looks like the stem is continuing down. And then we have these two kind of hibiscus string pull flowers and then moving on up to the butterflies so i love that one and when the paint goes down i'll be able to uh, touch up that antenna so that you can see it there's the yellow one up there and here's this pink one so pretty love those butterflies all right so i will show you how this looks when it is dry so see you then all right, the painting is dry. It looks very good. So now it's time for me to paint the bodies and heads and stuff on, on the butterflies. So, um, so I've got a little cup of black paint here for this one because its spots are quite dark. But then for this one, it looks like it's got black on its wings, but it's actually like a dull black. And this one also is not quite black. So I mixed up this little, it's um, some metallic gold mixed with black. So it's kind of a shimmery dark brown, which I'm going to use for these two butterflies. So let me show you on this one first, because when they're flying, that's the simplest butterfly body 
shape to make. Basically what you want to do is not touch the wings with your hands. You want to fill in the space in between the wings. Paint a little head shape. And in this case, the antennae are kind of high up, so I want to make sure that the head extends far enough that it connects with those antennae. And then the body just extends the abdomen. You want it to extend out between the wings a little bit. And sometimes you want to paint over the wings just a little bit. If your bottom wings are too close to each other, sometimes you need to actually paint over the wings in order to give the impression of the continuous abdomen. Okay, that one I think is done. Very, very simple. So that's really all you need to do with a flying butterfly body. You're just kind of creating that line that joins it all together. Okay, now I'm going to move over to this one over here. So I'm going to wipe off my brush and switch to the black paint. So with this one, clearly we want a head. We want the thorax, which is the body that's kind of the shoulder area, shoulder and chest area. And then we want the abdomen also to be kind of poking out from underneath this bottom wing. So for these antennae, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing because I have to get really close to it. Um, the places where the antennae kind of sank into the white paint, I'm carefully painting over those because they do poke up just enough from the painting's surface. That you can kind of get a brush on them. There we go. That looks a little better. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. Um, I will paint the legs and proboscis after this is dry. Right now I'm just doing the bodies and the heads. Okay, so there we have the three bodies painted on. So I'll show you then uh, when I come back and add the legs, and if I add any definition for the eyes, which I think on these two sideways ones I will add some definition where the eyes are, the legs, the proboscis, so I'll show you that part. Look how cute that is. I love that. It looks so realistic, so detailed. So here it is all finished. Got the beautiful foliage with a bit of metallic shimmer there in that magenta. And then we have three really standout butterflies here.
And overall, just a beautiful kind of Victorian vintage floral butterfly scene. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it inspired you to try something new. Let me know down in the comments if you have ever done a mixed media acrylic pour. And if so, what was it? I hope to see you back at my channel very soon for my next video. Bye!